The divergence theorem, also known as the Gauss theorem, is a mathematical result widely used in physics and engineering. For example, it can be used to calculate the flow of a fluid through a closed surface, the electric or magnetic flux through a closed surface, or the heat transfer through a solid object. In this video, our goal is to provide the most intuitive and concise way of understanding the Gauss theorem. In a nutshell, the divergence theorem tells us that the amount of stuff flowing out of a region must be equal to the amount of stuff that is being produced or consumed within that region. By the end of this video, you shall be convinced that the Gauss theorem is merely a mathematical statement on bookkeeping the flow of stuff out of an enclosed region. Let's begin. I assume most of you already know what is a vector field. But for completeness, I shall briefly remind you that a vector field is a function that assigns a vector to each point in a region of space. Here, we shall denote this vector field as E. The vectors in a vector field can represent various physical quantities such as velocity, force, electric field, or magnetic field. Given a vector field, one can also define a scalar field called divergence, which describes how much the vector field flows out of a small region in space. For example, in this highlighted region of space, we see that the vectors has a net inflow. While in this region of space, the effective inflow seems to balance the outflow. More specifically, at any point in the vector field, the divergence is the amount of vector flux emanating from it. In other words, we can view it as the vector field integrated over the surface of the unit volume, as the volume becomes infinitesimally small. More about this later. Points where the divergence is positive is often called a source, and a sink when the divergence is negative. The divergence theorem, also known as Gauss's theorem, is a fundamental result in vector calculus that relates the flow of a vector field through a closed surface as illustrated on the right, to the integrated divergence of the vector field within the enclosed volume, as illustrated on the left. In simple English, it tells us that the amount of stuff flowing out of or into a region must be equal to the amount of stuff that is being produced or consumed within that region. In what follows, we want to seek a mathematical expression for the divergence d again, the divergence is the amount of vector flux emanating from it. Let's consider an infinitesimal volume, dv, located at the position vector as shown. First, let's compute the flux escaping from the surfaces pointing along the directions plus minus x. Only the vector component normal to the surfaces would contribute to the flux leakage. Thus, the flux is given by the area, delta y times delta z multiply by the field component EX as shown. Note the negative sign on the left surface, since the surface is pointing in the minus X direction. The sum of these two fluxes, is the finite difference approximation to the differential of EX with respect to X multiplied by the volume. Similar computation can also be performed for the surfaces pointing along plus minus Y. Here, it is the EY component of the electric field that is contributing to the flux. The sum of these two fluxes is the finite difference approximation to the differential of EY with respect to Y multiplied by the volume. Finally, we have the contributions from the surfaces pointing along plus minus Z. Here, it is the EZ component of the electric field that is contributing to the flux. The sum of these two fluxes is the finite difference approximation to the differential of EZ with respect to Z multiplied by the volume. The total flux emanating from the elemental volume dV is thus given by the sum of the partial differential of the respective electric field components, which is mathematically represented by the nabla symbol dot the electric field vector. We call this the divergence of the vector field E. Thus, we have just proved that for an elemental infinitesimal volume dV, the integrated divergence is equal to the flux emanating out of the surfaces of dV. This is exactly the Gauss divergence theorem but applied to an infinitesimal volume dV. Would the Gauss theorem still holds for finite volume? Let's imagine combining two elemental volumes as shown. The total divergence will then be the sum of the divergence from each elemental volume. However, since these two elemental volumes shared a common surface, 
the flux from one element would negate that from the other element at that common surface. In other words, the flux that escaped from one volume through this common surface would have to enter the other volume. Thus, there is essentially no net flux that escaped from the combined volumes. We can extend this idea and consider four connected elemental volumes. Again, the total divergence is given by the sum of the divergence of each volume. Fluxes between volumes with common surfaces would negate. Thus, the fluxes that contribute to the total divergence are only the fluxes emanating out of the outer surfaces of the joined volume. In summary, the total divergence of a volume 5 is given by the sum of the divergences of the elemental volumes that make up the volume, as depicted here. Computing the divergence this way is the same as computing the total fluxes that emanates from the surfaces that encloses the volume 5 as shown. In the limit where dv goes to 0, then the discrete summation can be converted into a continuous integral which then gives us the well-known Gauss divergence theorem, which states that integrating the divergence of the field over an enclosed volume, v, is equal to calculating the flux emanating from the surface that enclosed the volume. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.